Recently, we did a video on Zapier Central, and at the time, we were using Google Sheets as a backend data source because there were only a couple of options, Notion and Google Sheets. Now, as many of you are aware, we're really big fans of Airtable, as I'm sure many of you are as well, and so we're really excited that Airtable is now available as a data source for Zapier Central. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. So I'm logged into Zapier Central, and I'm going to create a bot and add a new data source to it. And so if we click on the button for Add Data Source, you'll see we now have this additional option of Airtable. If you've already authenticated to Airtable for other Zaps, you're going to see that your same connection is present, and then you can choose your base that you want to connect to. You can search for your base, and then click to add the data source. You can see your data source down at the bottom, and I can click to expand this. Sometimes if you're experiencing technical issues, you'll want to expand this and just make sure that it's synced. You can trigger a manual resync if that's necessary. Now in this video, we're primarily focused on adding a data source of Airtable, but if you want to learn more about behaviors, you can check out our other video on Zapier Central. So for this particular use case, we're building a YouTube bot. And the reason we're doing this is because we actually often struggle as we're creating content and we want to share links with people. Oftentimes people ask, oh, hey, Dan, have you created a video on some topic that we made several months ago. And in order to find that, I'm hunting back on the back end of YouTube, trying to find these videos, and I'm combing back in time to try to find the appropriate one. The other trick is that if I'm on the front end of YouTube and I'm trying to find someone a link, if I click on that, it's going to open up my own videos and start playing ads. And I don't want that to go against the terms of service for YouTube. So the goal of this bot is to be able to retrieve links about YouTube videos based on questions that we ask it. So here you can see I have a really simple base of YouTube videos. Now, if you're wondering how I got that information, I'm not using a web scraper. I went to BuildShip and I actually created my own endpoint to be able to call data from the YouTube API. This is a topic we'll have to dig into in a future video, but we're really excited about BuildShip and all you can do with building your own API functionality. But once the data is here, the reason I kept this really simple was just to show you how powerful it is inside of Zapier using only these three fields, the name of the video, the YouTube ID, the unique identifier, and the publish date. I'm gonna change the name of my bot here to YouTube Buddy. So let's test it out. I'm gonna ask a question. Can you give me the link to my video on Zapier Central? I know I created this, it was a couple of weeks ago. So let's ask it the question at a high level. This wasn't the exact title. Can you give me a link to that video? Okay, and so it's return a response. Sure, you can find your video on Zapier Central at this YouTube link. Now check out how cool this is. If I actually hover over this, it gives me a hyperlink. Now in Airtable, I just had a field for YouTube ID. Now, of course, YouTube has its own unique URL for each video by appending or concatenating this YouTube ID, but I didn't tell it what to do. It just had enough context to know exactly how to format that link. So this is one of those fun Easter eggs inside of Zapier. We didn't have to create a formula inside of Airtable to tell it what we wanted to create that URL. It just happened to know that. Now, remember one of our fields was the publish date. And so we can ask it questions about the entire body of records that we have. So I'm gonna ask, how many videos have I published in 2024? So it takes a minute, but it's able to actually calculate how many videos we've created. And we can expand this to see it's essentially using SQL to be able to identify the videos that were published this year. Now let's ask it a question that involves some categorization. In this case, it's only looking at the topics or the titles of the videos. We could do something more sophisticated and feed in the transcripts or the tags, but right now we're just gonna keep it simple. So let's ask it, what videos have we created about Zapier? And you can see it's generated a list, including links to all of the videos and the published dates. So I don't know about you, but I'm getting pretty excited about all the power that Zapier Central has, especially now that they're able to connect to Airtable as a data source. If you have any questions about your own Airtable or Zapier setup, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.